Well, no introductions necessary. Uh, this is my fellow associate and researcher, Vern. How's it going, Vern? Good to see you could make the review. And of course, Sparky, uh, my master taster. Uh, Sparky, uh, you got into it a little bit early again. We sort of talked about this, you know, we got a long review ahead, and uh, uh, I don't like it when you start uh, falling asleep in the middle of a review. Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey, and uh, as usual, I'm doing a review after uh, being up in the mountains there, doing some Nordic. Uh, we live in an area similar to Scotland, Vancouver Island, and uh, in the winter it's probably similar weather, but we got snow up in the mountains, I know they do too. We have uh, a great place here to keep yourself healthy in the winter, go up in the mountain, as long as you don't injure yourself, uh, you know, you can stay healthy and you can live a full life. Fingers crossed. Anyways, I am doing a review on a blended scotch. Why? Because I drink blended scotches the occasionally, and that's how I started my scotch experience, which I got from my father, who drank blended scotches which he brought back from World War II because he was a Battle of Britain pilot. He was one of the first ones over there. He was Canadian that had his license before he went to the Battle of Britain, before he became part of the, uh, the Canadian group that went over there to help the, uh, the Royal Air Force fight a very difficult battle where they were completely outnumbered. So what he brought back was culture. He brought back some of the Scottish and British culture. He brought back scotch. And as kids we snuck into it. And I can remember some of his blended scotches. And he didn't drink doers. He drank a lot of teachers. And the odd Johnny Walker. Highland Cream. And uh, you know we, we sort of got to know scotch as a blended scotch. And when I was younger and I was hanging out with my college buddies and working in the oil business, I drank a lot of blended scotches. So that's when I got introduced to Dewar's because Dewar's always was one of my favorites. And we had Johnny Walker around, we had Chivas around, we even had some thing called Nupla Ultra. I think it was one of the Canadian whiskey companies that uh, owned, uh, they, they owned a couple of uh, Scottish distilleries, so they were bringing uh, blended scotches over and bottling it under their own brand name. But I, I was never that crazy about them. I always liked Dewar's. I've always been fond of Dewar's, but I swear that Dewar's is as good, if not better today than it's ever been. So that's why I'm going to review it. And um, what can I say about Dewar's? Well, I have a Dewar's 21 in front of me. I have a Dewar's 27. I have a Dewar's, uh, oh, I have a, a 25. And I have a Dewar's 32. So the, the, the 21, the 27, and the 32 are called double doubles. You know, the way they're distilled, kind of confusing. I could try to explain it to you. I think I'll have to read it from the back of the uh, box here. And then I have a 25. We, and they really get into, you know, some of their distilleries that they own. And they, I mean, they have um, Al Alberfeld, Aberfeldy, which I, I just did a review on several of their scotches. 
and uh, they have uh, Royal Brackla and Altmar. But anyways, uh, Doers Double Double. 21. Why the 21? Why not the 27? Why not the 25? Well, I haven't got them open. <laughs> I really like this stuff, and I've been really happy uh, to serve this to anybody, and I have never had anybody say they didn't enjoy this. So, let's review it. Uh, explaining, number one, how do they get Double Double Series? It's, it's, it's a unique four-stage aging process. So on the picture, they show me they get, you know, you've got your, 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 your uh, grain barrels on one side and you've got your single malts on the other. And then you, you've got, they're showing three barrels of grains and three of malts, but I, proportionally it's a lot, a lot more malt whiskey in this. And then you, what you do is you put those into one barrel, the three grain, and you put the three malts into one barrel. And then... You take the, the, the two barrels and you blend them together and you get that single barrel. Now, uh, that's not the end of it. The single barrel is a sherry cask finish. So, you've, you've done all this in, in bourbon and oak and you're finishing in a sherry. So, as the picture shows, you've got three of the grain, three of the, uh, of the malt, and you put it into singles, so now you've got two barrels left there, and you take those two barrels and you finish them in a sherry. And believe you me, there's, it's not half and half grain and, and malt. It's, it's just enough grain that what it does, it, it, it lightens the whiskey a bit. Now, this stuff here, in all, in all fairness to doers, and that's why I drink doers, and that's why I have so much respect for them. And with blended scotch companies, whether you're drinking Chibis or whether you're drinking Johnny Walker, whatever your favorite is, Cuddy Sark or whatever. Um, what I like about Chibis is that, or pardon me, uh, Doers, and I think Chibis is trying to do this as well. And I see it with Johnny Walker. They actually, they're, when, when they're, when they're, they have a blended scotch let's think of it different than a vaunted scotch so you have a blended scotch which does have some green alcohol you have vaunted scotches but you're blended malts there is no grain in them so this does have grain in it so um what we're seeing is their companies are doing both now so we know johnny walker does green label and it is a vaunted scotch so it's a mixture of malt scotches and it's their uh, unique 43%. Everything else is 40% with Johnny Walker, and here they do a 43. Now, there is a couple of off ones that do more than 40%, but uh, I haven't drank them. So, uh, now we get into Doers. Doers is doing 46%, and uh, non chill filtered. And I believe this one has no coloring. So, interesting. You never saw that from uh, blenders before. Um, I, and you know, I, I, I think we're seeing progress is what we're seeing. Uh, Shibis evidently is doing the same thing in one of their, one of their blends. But anyways, let's get into the, uh, let's get into the review. Uh, let's open this guy up. Kind of a nice box. And by the way, well, don't let that happen. Um, these boxes here, uh, they look big, but this is a small bottle, it's a half size. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to make this affordable to the guy that can't afford to pay for a full, full body of 21 or 27 or 32 year old scotch. So what they've been doing is they've been making these 375s. And real nice little bottle and a nice box, just don't do what I just did. And um, you know what? It, 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 it's affordable because this here is, geez, did I pay 60 bucks for it? It wasn't that much. Uh, 59, 58, I forget. But it wasn't that much. And that was the first reason why I bought it. I like doers, but the price was right. So let's pull it out safely. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, I have drank some. 
I have several bottles of these uh, 21s because I was worried they might run out of them or they might stop and I really do like the whiskey. So uh, I've, I've uh, served this to a lot of company and I have never had anybody complain about it. So that's, that's a good start for a review. <clears throat> And my nose is clear because I was up on the mountain and I was doing enough exercise that I'm ready for nosing. Rich, uh, right off the bat, I get the vanilla, I get the um, peach, I get... Um, Oh, I can get a bit of baked cobbler. And the stone fruits. Toasted grain. And the spices. A lot of stuff going on here. And I'm probably cheating a bit because I've done this many times. See if I can get something different. Lemon, lemon custard, lemon meringue pie. Really you can get the meringue here. This is a rich drink. Wow. Now, if you look at this, it's got a very deep color, and you can see the 21 years in the casks. Uh, it's it's funny drinking a blended whiskey that's 46, you know, and non-chill filtered. So dominating uh, the sweetness that we talked about the uh, the dark and the stone fruits and the honey, the vanilla with a little bit of the lemon in the background. It's funny when you're interpreting these notes, I mean, we probably have a lot of overlap because we'll describe what I describe as, let's say, lemon custard. Somebody else might say vanilla with a little lemon, you know. Um, we all have our own way of um, using descriptors and, you know, uh, I kind of create some of my own descriptors and um, I'm now finding some of the descriptors I thought I created, other people are using, so I guess everything's out there, you know. This is just, it's got such a robust, you know, aroma to it. It's just, uh, the nose is very rich. You know, for blended whiskey, you usually find blended whiskeys are quite light and I don't get so much rich, you know, the fruits and the, and the, sh and the uh, even maybe a little Demerara sugar, you know, you know thinking of a, a Caribbean cask or something, you know, but the, the, the sherry notes are definitely there, the fruit. Yeah, impressed. Um, the palate. More of the same. It's a, it's a, a really got some viscosity, the mouthfeel to it, eh? And here's the baking spices. Um, black and white pepper mixed in with the, um, the lemon meringue pie. We'll say spicy lemon meringue pie. Stewed peaches, apricots, more vanilla. You know what? Um, every once in a while I get something smoky. I'm not getting it uh, this time around, but we'll, we'll be patient. Maybe it'll show up. I, I think there is some smoke in this because I've tasted it before. Um, more of the spices. Um, not as much cinnamon, but I'm going to say we're going to get a little bit of ginger show up here because it has in the past. 
Wait for it. Uh, getting the 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 grain, the malt, the malted uh, the malted grains, uh, kind of toasty, toasted malted grains, and uh, the wood, the wood showing, the woods. Smooth though it's not. I get a very slight astringency, uh, not much at all. Very slight. Twenty-one years, you know. Well, let's go for the finish. Sweet. More of the sweet, more of what I'm getting in the palate, but slightly, slightly showing up. The wood is slightly showing up right now. I can kind of, and then maybe we're getting the charred, the charred barrels. The, the, you know what, I, I'm not identifying so much the smoke, probably charred barrels. <clears throat> Nice uh, mouth coating. Yeah, it's it's got a nice finish. Um, very very light burn to this, eh? Very very light. Um, an enjoyable burn. Uh, just a, a gentle Kentucky hug. Yeah, I do a little bourbon once in a while. I get a good hug from some of my bourbons, but this is a gentle hug. So um, the finish is still still there. I'm still uh, tasting a little bit of the the wood on my on my tongue, uh, the tannins, but not strong. They're not you know they're not overwhelming, and I think that's because of the the richness of the. Um, of the fruits and the vanilla and you know the bourbon definitely has some influence here but the sherry is there too with the fruits and um, still a little bit of tartness in the lemon this has got a good finish boy it's really got a good finish um, we've got enough there we can add a little water at 46 I, I, I will add water. I don't usually do it 43 or 40, but at 46, I'll give it a drop. I don't want to give it too much, so I'm going to be really careful here. I really, really don't like a lot of water. There, that's probably enough. <clears throat> Just enough to kind of chemically open things up. Just to release some of the stuff that, uh, you know, I've learned... Uh, Probably the hard way because I always put too much water in in the beginning and then I got frustrated and didn't like it. Um, and I, st I started to put less water in and started to get more. I got more with less. So and give it a little bit of time there, let it kind of open up a bit here. And Well, let's give it the nose first. Let's just see if we've changed the nose. Oh yeah. Sweet. It's bringing the sweet. Sweet and spice. And here's the cinnamon. Sweet cinnamon. Yeah. Um, apple. Cinnamon apple crisp. Cinnamon apple crisp. And um, I think I mentioned once before I, one of my reviews, Huckleberry Crumble, Huckleberry Crisp, because we, we had a gal that used to bake it out at a place we used to camp. We used to have our trailers out at, uh, you know, it was a lake up, uh, yeah, upper, upper Campbell Lake, up north, uh, north part of uh, Vancouver Island. And... Um, she used to bake with this uh, incredible huckleberry crumble and, and crisp. We go pick the huckleberries when they were ripe. Darn it, they were good. 
But this is not that. that one of my other reviews, I mentioned it because it, it, I, I identify with it. This is definitely apple, apple crumble, spicy cinnamon apple crumble. Yeah, delicious. What a difference it makes. Wow. Sweet. It always, just a, a couple of drops of water, it just, man, it just opens up the sweetness. It's, um, but it, it seems to do this. It just smooths everything out, eh? Um, like, distinguishing, like, peaches from apricots, from raspberries, might be a little more difficult now when I add the water. Um... I'm gonna, I might get them in a flash, but I find it just really brings sweet notes to me. But I am getting lots of, of, of the vanilla sweetness. I'm still getting a lot of that. This has been fun. I've enjoyed this. I um, hope I haven't rambled on too much, but... Um, when I'm doing this, it comes out of my mouth. Sorry. <laughs> um, this is a heck of a good investment. I paid under 60 bucks for this. Now, I know it's a half bottle, but it's a damn good bottle. And I'm paying 120 150 for bottles that I, I don't think they're quite here. So I'm going to give this a very good mark. But i got to leave some room because I've got a 27 and i got a 32. <laughs> That's the problem. And I haven't done the 27 yet, so I'm looking forward to that. The 25 I've done, it, it, uh, it kicked butt. So, um, but the 21's, you know, a little less age, but man, it's... It's there as well, so. Um, this is an 86. It's an 86. So, drink wisely, drink intelligently. Do not drink and drive. Until the next time. Slunch.